that activist rally, but someone that was also not invited at the roundtable discussion to meet with the president was the National Border Patrol Council. Now, they are the union that represents the Border Patrol agents on the line. Now, I was able to speak to the vice president, who's been an agent for 22 years, and he tells me he has mixed emotions about the lack of an invitation with the president. Uh, it's kind of mixed emotions. It, it's good that the president's finally coming down. It, too bad it wasn't this time last year or three years ago when, when everything kind of went crazy, but I guess uh, better late than never. It's been a busy year. Already in fiscal year 2024, Border Patrol has encountered over 1,230,000 people illegally entering the country. But even with these large numbers, agents are now seeing a slight decrease in apprehensions. This area last year, we were seeing thousands a day just in this area. I think yesterday we saw 12. Um, so, you know, the state of Texas has done a pretty good job of, of shutting this area down. Um, you know, it, it would have been good uh, maybe if he's in here to talk to you know, representatives of the state of Texas to figure out what needs to be done along the rest of the border. But the dip in numbers, Cabrera says, is due to the work the state of Texas has done, like Senate Bill 4, not the work of the federal government. Take this fight to these organizations and assume operational control. I think it has a lot to do with uh, what the state of Texas, uh, most notably the borders are. Uh, Mike Banks has done down here. Um, you know, Texas has slowing down from Eagle from um, Brownsville all the way to El Paso, um, but it's still busy in, in Arizona and San Diego. So you can't say it's, uh, you know, any, any other outside factors other than the state of Texas. Notably absent from today's presidential visit is Governor Greg Abbott. I think it shows that, you know, the federal government has failed uh, on the border issues. And it's an issue that's impacting the entire country. Just last week, 22-year-old Georgia nursing student Lakin Riley was murdered by a man who was illegally in the country from Venezuela. Records show he crossed illegally from El Paso. It's happened in our area before with, with uh, Border Patrol agent Javier Vega was killed by some illegals. Um, you had people out in California. And, I mean, it's an endless list, and it's going to continue to to grow until people wake up and realize that that not everybody coming across is a criminal, but not everybody coming across has well intentions either. Now, Cabrera says agents will continue to do their job regardless of who's in office and who's visiting the valley. Hopefully, things will will turn around soon. I mean, it's. I hate to see it get much worse. I don't know if it can get much worse, but, um, you know, hopefully this administration will wake up and uh, and, and fix some of the uh, problems that we're seeing right now because, um, you know, right now it's pretty bad, but hopefully we'll, we'll see some light at the end of the tunnel. Though the council was not invited to speak with the president, the RGV sector chief for Border Patrol, Gloria Chavez, was the one leading the roundtable today, and she told the president at least 8,000 pounds of fentanyl have already been seized by agents this year alone. She also said $2.3 million in illegal cash has been seized coming through the border and over 600 weapons. And the president was also briefed by the ICE ERO people in charge and they informed him that they've already deported 170,000 people who were already living in the country illegally. These are not the people that were crossing. These are people that had already established a life inside of the United States up of the border and they had been deported this fiscal year and the ICE Euro agent did inform the president this is the highest number of deportations they've had in ICE history. So he was getting a lot of insight from the agents on the ground here today during his visit and of course, you can recap the latest on the numbers and our coverage online and on air. But for now, I'm going to send it back to you, Derek, in the studio reporting live in Olmito. I'm Sydney Hernandez. Derek. Sydney,